Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Preet Bharara, and I'm the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Uh, today, we launch an aggressive assault on a public health crisis that is reaching epidemic proportions. The scourge of dangerous new drugs that are killing people and sending thousands upon thousands to emergency rooms in New York City and around the country. These drugs are what experts call synthetic cannabinoids, what others sometimes call synthetic marijuana, and what people on the street call K2 or spice. So what exactly did we do today? To put it simply, we have undertaken the single largest law enforcement action ever in New York City to combat the spice epidemic. We have charged 10 men with conspiring to dump over a ton of synthetic cannabinoids into all five boroughs of New York City, and we expect to charge more. We conducted searches of five facilities and warehouses used to process, store, and distribute these dangerous drugs. We have seized to date in this investigation more than 200 kilograms of chemicals, plus approximately 275,000 packets of finished product that would have totaled more than 2,705 kilograms of spice, and we are still counting. That quantity of spice, by the way, using a conservative estimate of $5 per packet, could have a street value of over $30 million, and those are now off the street. Also today, our partners at the New York City Sheriff's Office are inspecting um, 80 to 90 stores and bodegas around the city of, uh, suspected of selling this toxic drug from the very same counters where they sell milk and candy. So why did we take this sweeping action today? We do so first because it's illegal. Synthetic cannabinoids contain controlled substances. Their manufacture and distribution are federal crimes, and people need to understand this. But there is more to it than that. What is being sold every day in bodegas and convenience stores throughout the city to teenagers, to homeless people, to addicts, is literally poison. Toxic chemicals that bind to receptors in the central nervous system to frightening and sometimes even deadly effect. So it is important to clear up something right at the outset. Despite sometimes being called synthetic marijuana, this stuff is not marijuana. It can cause unpredictably severe and even lethal effects. It is not natural, and it is not harmless in any sense of the word. In fact, some experts believe that spice can be up to 100 times more potent than pot. Spice is not marijuana in kind of the same way that a bazooka is not a BB gun. And let me tell you a little bit about how they're manufactured. They are made by spraying a variety of chemicals, mostly from China, onto leafy materials. Then once dried, the leaves are put into small packets with colorful logos and catchy brand names such as Black Giant, Geeked Up, Psycho, and Scooby Snacks. I think you can see that at the second chart to my right. Some are even given bubble gum like flavors, strawberry, lime, or blueberry. The contents of these packets, which can sell, as I said, for as little as $5 a packet, can then be smoked. They're packaged like children's candy, but they are, in fact, a terrible poison. The combination of chemicals and toxins varies from batch to batch, and so does the potency. So no one really knows the precise effects of any particular batch. So smoking it becomes a dangerous game of Russian roulette that too many people in our city are playing. Now, because the structure of certain synthetics can bind too strongly to receptors or can be laced with other toxic chemicals, spice can have extremely powerful and unpredictable effects, including seizures, psychosis, and even death. It can cause strokes in otherwise healthy adults and heart attacks in teenagers. Um, a couple of quick stats that I think are alarming. Phone calls to U.S. poison centers about synthetic cannabinoid use in the first four months of this year increased by 225% over last year. In New York State alone, use of these drugs resulted in over 2,300 emergency room visits in just a two-month period. That is a tenfold increase over the same period last year, tenfold. What's more, use of these drugs aggravates all manner of other societal ills. They are entering prisons, preying on the homeless, burdening our hospitals and emergency rooms, fueling addiction, exacerbating mental health problems, and increasing risks to cops who have to deal with people high on these drugs. So let me describe just briefly in some more detail the specific criminal charges brought today. 
Uh, the 10 defendants in the indictment are charged with participating in a sophisticated and vertically integrated narcotics conspiracy from manufacturers to wholesalers to distribution to sellers. If you take a look at the, at the organizational chart here to my right, you see that the first phase is uh, the manufacture of the chemicals and the packaging, which is done in China. A lot of this stuff, as you may have read and understand, comes from China. In fact, some experts say that China is becoming uh, to spice what Colombia has been to cocaine and what Afghanistan has been to heroin, and that's a problem. The leafy material on which the chemicals are sprayed comes in, uh, from the United States. The manufacturers uh, put it all together, sell it to the wholesalers, three of whom are identified here and alleged in the indictment, which then goes to delivery drivers, and we have alleged, <laughs> we've alleged three people uh, who are delivery drivers in the indictment. And then, as I've also described, that then gets shipped out to a variety of retail locations, mostly bodegas and convenience stores, um, to show you how rapidly the scene is changing. When this chart was prepared last night, we were talking about 78 retail locations. And in speaking with Commissioner Bratton a few minutes ago, I think the number is now up into the 90s. Um, so that's essentially what the scheme looks like as an organizational matter. In the past year alone, this organization is alleged to have imported and distributed about 1,300 kilograms over a ton of synthetic cannabinoids, approximately 260,000 packets, each one potentially leading to a trip to the emergency room or even worse. Uh, incidentally, by the way, they were also allegedly operating in and around 125th Street in Harlem, where there is a concentration of rehab clinics and reports of pervasive spice abuse in the street. Uh, as of this morning, we have arrested six of the 10 defendants. Uh, and as I mentioned, we expect to charge more. The arrests uh, and, and investigation and prosecutions that bring us here today are the result of really extraordinary collaboration on the part of a lot of different agencies. And so indulge me as I acknowledge all of them. First, I'm honored to be joined by Commissioner Bill Bratton uh, of the New York City Police Department. His leadership and vision in this and so many other important cases continue to keep our city safe. And I thank him and the whole department uh, for all their work on this case especially. Second, I want to thank our federal partner in this and so many of our important drug cases, the DEA represented here by Assistant Special Agent in Charge Keith Kruskal. I also want to thank the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement's Homeland Securities Investigations, re represented today by Acting Special Agent in Charge Glenn Sorge, for their critical work on this case. Uh, also, Customs and Border Protection, represented here by Director Robert Perez. They, by the way, were crucial in seizing illegal synthetic chemicals coming in from abroad. I would also like to thank the Office of the Sheriff of the City of New York, represented by Joseph Fusito, as I mentioned earlier, the sheriff's office is visiting scores and scores of these uh, convenience stores this morning and throughout the day and will play a crucial role in ensuring that our local bodegas and convenience stores are not used for the sale of these toxic drugs. I also want to acknowledge the New York State Police for their assistance in this investigation, represented here by Lieutenant Stephen Mutis. And finally, last but not least, the prosecutors in my office who have spent a lot of time putting this case together, Assistant U.S. Attorneys Nagar Takei, uh, Alex Ross Miller, Max Nicholas, Kate Riley, Nick Vellamore, along with the Narcotics Chiefs, Jessica Ortiz and Jessica Masella. You know, as, as widely reported until now, these poisons have been sold too openly and without enough fear of prosecution. Our aim is to change that calculus. Our aim is to increase that fear. Manufacturers and distributors, like those arrested today, should be especially wary of harsh federal action. But they are not the only ones who should beware. We have a message for the enablers also. If you own a bodega or a convenience store or a gas station, don't stock this stuff. We will, if appropriate, arrest store owners who knowingly peddle poison. But in the meantime, don't take any chances and do a public service. Stop spelling, selling spice now, or you risk getting shut down, or worse, prosecuted. Synthetic cannabinoids are a deadly and serious problem that demand an equally serious response. Today's collective action is just the start of that response, one that will not end until this poison in a packet no longer endangers our community. Now let me turn it over to uh, Commissioner Bratton. Thank you, Pete. Good morning. Uh, to the U.S. Attorney and to the colleagues who are here with us, a thank you. This uh, year-long investigation uh, has culminated in the press availability we're having with you this morning, but 
its repercussions will continue in terms of our enforcement actions. As the U.S. Attorney has referenced simultaneous with this press conference, we are currently uh, uh, hitting 93 additional locations at this time, and we anticipate that as a result of that action, there'll be additional information forthcoming this afternoon relative to what we find at those locations. I'd like to, uh, in addition to thanking the U.S. Attorney for his leadership and focus on this issue, that uh, uh, in uh, my organization, uh, I'd like to thank <coughs> Deputy Inspector Paul Morrow, whose work uh, initiated this case, as well as the city and the police department's intense focus on this particular problem. Those of you who cover this city routinely are well aware of the number of press availabilities we have had over the last number of months focusing attention on this issue, the dangers to my officers, the dangers to the public, the dangers to those who use it. And the irony is that uh, the central distribution point for this throughout the city, while most of the attention is focused on northern uh, Manhattan and uh, the Bronx, this poison is being spread throughout the city through bodegas, largely in convenience stores. Ironically, bodegas, convenience stores, which are supposedly supposed to provide nourishment in the form of milk and bread and to the communities they supposedly serve, have effectively, over this past year, been poisoning those communities. We have been uh, advancing against them using a combination of the Department of Health, Sheriff's Department, and the Police Department because we don't currently have sufficient criminal laws to move against them. The feds, fortunately, the federal government and the U.S. Attorney certainly do, and so the efforts, the leadership that they are providing to go after these enterprises criminally cannot be underestimated. The Speaker of our City Council uh, has indicated that she intends to take strong action this legislative session to pass laws that would in fact criminalize a lot of the activity that we're uncovering. And Mayor De Bill de Blasio has spoken very strongly supportive of that. We cannot tolerate the poisoning of our young people, the poisoning of some of our most helpless, the homeless. And we have clearly seen in the police department direct criminal uh, uh, impact as a result of this, and certainly health and hospitals has seen the human toil, or human toll, if you will, with the significant increase in hospitalizations in emergency room, uh, uh, it those being admitted to emergency rooms. A great case, <coughs> the beginning of an effort. This doesn't close it, but it really sends a strong message that the federal government, state government, local government, we are going to be focused like a laser on this issue, on eradicating this poison from our communities. And that's what it is, K2, synthetic marijuana, weaponized marijuana, uh, whatever the name, effectively, it's poison. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Now let me call to the podium DEA Assistant Special in Charge, Keith uh, Kruskal. Thank you. Um, I first, wanna, first and foremost, I want to thank the hundreds of male and female law enforcement officers who work with us who represent over a dozen law enforcement agencies uh, to make this enforcement effort today a, su a complete success. Without their effort, um, DEA would never be able to pull off an operation like this. It's truly a collective effort uh, by everyone and I thank you to our law enforcement partners. Synthetic cannabinoids have been unleashed in New York City. With street names like K2 and Spice, this drug is misrepresented as being not harmful. The fact of the matter is this is not marijuana. There's absolutely no marijuana in it. What it is is illegally, illegally imported chemical compounds from China that's sprayed upon leaf material packaged in a way that's acceptable to our children that, that, that draws them to it and sold in local delis and head shops. So since last year, DEA has increased seizures of synthetic cannabinoids by 200%. We have prioritized our resources to identify those organizations that are trafficking in this, in this drug. As an example, drug traffickers familiarize the drug to our children and package it, like I said, in packages like Scooby Snacks. So you can see that this, you know, this appeals to our youth. They'll go to these delis and buy it, and they have no idea what they're, what they're ingesting. They're basically ingesting poison. We have fielded phone calls, complaints, and questions from moms, dads, the public asking what DEA is doing about this. They're asking what we're doing about the 5,932 calls received by the American Poison Control 
since January of this year. Today's enforcement shows exactly what we're doing. We're committed to wiping out this emerging threat to New York City, shutting down those who are making it, moving it, selling it out of the delis in all five boroughs. Thank you. Thank you. Let me call to the podium now uh, ICE Acting Special Agent in Charge, Glenn Sword. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here today. Yesterday's arrests and today's inspections put an end to, to a drug trafficking organization that illegally imported and distributed, quote, synthetic marijuana onto the streets of New York City. The drugs are marketed as a, quote, legal high and, and are packaged to attract young adults with names like Scooby Snack and K2, among others. Like heroin, synthetic marijuana is rapidly becoming a problem in our <coughs> communities, especially for teens and young adults. It's cheap, dangerous, and hard to regulate. One of the more unnerving aspects of this problem is that we have seen many different versions of the drug, as the makers of these drugs often use different chemicals that are readily available on the internet. Each year, our agency seizes thousands of pounds of illegal synthetic drugs, and we arrest dozens of unscrupulous dealers who peddle this poison in our communities. But unfortunately, we cannot arrest our way out of this problem. We need an informed public to serve as an ally in this fight. As you can see from those here today, we are working side by side with our law enforcement partners, both here and abroad, to combat this situation. Finally, I want to thank all of our partners here before you as, as who participated in taking down this drug trafficking organization today and uh, yesterday. Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, thank you, Glenn. L let me call the podium uh, Customs and Border Protection Director Robert Perez. Good morning, folks. U.S. Customs and Border Protection is proud to have contributed to the enforcement efforts being announced today and honored to be here with our partners. Uh, CBP is America's front line. Uh, we are the guardians of our nation's borders, uh, protecting the public via a very complex national security and homeland security mission, all the while enhancing our economic competitiveness by securing and enabling legitimate trade and travel. This year, uh, here in the New York City area alone, we'll process over 20 million internationally arriving passengers and over $270 billion worth of international trade. To effectively secure and manage this activity, we employ a variety of sophisticated tools and technologies that assist us in th uh, targeting and inspecting those shipments and pa uh, passengers that pose a potential risk to public safety. By using uh, systems like our advanced targeting uh, uh, method methodologies and uh, electronic capability systems, the frontline CBP officers at JFK Airport were able to identify this illicit activity and contribute toward the seizures and the rest being announced here today. Uh, as you've heard, the dangers associated with these synthetic narcotics can't be overstated. Uh, that, they've, that they're packaged and pushed at our youth, as you see, in such a deliberate manner really speaks to the urgency of this uh, task. Uh, what I'd like to share with all of you is that this law enforcement community here in New York uh, is certainly up to, th to that task. The collaboration you see here today uh, is not the exception but the norm for this law enforcement community. The strength, the wherewithal, the will of the federal, city, state, and local law enforcement uh, folks, men and women uh, here in New York, stand second to none. I'd like to thank the U.S. Attorney's Office, NYPD, Homeland Security Investigations, the DEA, the Office of the Sheriff, and New York State Police for their partnership throughout this investigation and enforcement effort, and certainly all the men and women of CBP throughout New York uh, and the uh, metropolitan area for their dedication to duty and unwavering vigilance and, uh, with this cause and many others. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, happy to take questions. Yeah, I mean, I think public documents on seal today make reference to the fact um, that some of these folks in this conspiracy allegedly are aware of the impact of what they were distributing on 125th Street. I don't know the I think it's, there's several in the 125th Street area. Six to seven. Um, six, six to seven, six or seven, yeah. Yeah.
you know, I mean, you should be aware, by the way, that we're announcing this law enforcement action today, but it's been, I think, over a year long in the making. So as all these stories um, that you're referring to have gotten written and have been broadcast on television, um, law enforcement, these fine folks, and the people who work with us have been you know, working night and day to try to make sure that we can build a case and sh shut as much of this operation down as possible. Um, you know, why has it exploded in the way it has? Uh, there are a lot of reasons for it. I'm not um, a narcotics expert, but one reason is that it's pretty cheap. As I described, you can get a packet of this for $5. Um, it's relatively easy to obtain because they're being sold out of bodegas and convenience stores. Um, another aspect that I think hasn't been mentioned uh, but has been mentioned in some of the news articles that you folks have written uh, is that in many ways and in a lot of different circumstances, there are no drug tests for this. So I made a reference to the fact that it's finding its way into our prisons and inmates have said and former inmates have said that one of the reasons why they are using this particular kind of dangerous drug is so they can avoid detection um, in the prison. So there are a lot of reasons. You know, there are people all the time who want to get a cheap high, and now they're afforded that opportunity through this, you know, very unfortunate, uh, sometimes deadly poison. Yeah. Yeah, there's no allegation about where the money has gone. Um, I, I think if you look at the indictment itself, the, the, uh, the caption generally goes in the order of who was most important in the conspiracy. Uh, so you have uh, the, the first two or three people, I think, are fair to say, uh, were higher up in the hierarchy than, any, than anyone else. And that's, that's all I'll say about the organization. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to speak about state law. I'm not an expert on state law. I have my hands full dealing with federal law. But the DEA has been at the forefront of making sure that they're staying a step ahead of uh, the people who are manufacturing and distributing this type of drug and are making sure that um, through, uh, through administrative actions have added a lot of these drugs to the schedule so that we can prosecute them federally. So um, I know that there are efforts, and I think there are noble efforts, uh, in the criminal area with respect to state and locals. But as long as that is still going on, it makes sense for us to work on this in the way that we can because we have the tools to do so. There are not currently any city or state laws, criminal laws, that would allow a police officer to make an arrest for possession of uh, uh, this drug. The actions we have been taking over the last number of months, which you have reported on uh, in terms of going after some of these bodegas, has been a combination of the Department of Health, which uh, has regulations that they are in violation of, and we were able to use the Department of Health regulations and the support of the Sheriff's Department to allow us to get into these bodegas. And if they, in fact, <coughs> excuse me, have this drug, then we are able to take action against them based on the powers of the Department of Health. As I referenced, the Speaker of the City Council has indicated that she will be advancing a number of proposals to criminalize uh, activities related to possession and sale, particularly the sale of, of, of these drugs. As to the 125th Street location, it's an incredibly stressed area of the city, has a number of methadone clinics, a number of drug treatment clinics, has a number of city shelters, and it has several of the bodegas that have been very significantly involved in the sale of this drugs, effectively uh, poisoning that community. And it's received a lot of attention for a lot of reasons, but a significant part of the problem at that location is this activity. A group that would be very susceptible to this drug is uh, part of the population that is in our homeless shelters, many of whom are uh, recovering drug addicts on methadone, many of whom are still active in the use of drugs. And so as the uh, U.S. Attorney has referenced, it is so inexpensive. It's uh, anywhere from $5, sometimes as low as $3 for a hit. And uh, it is so easy to use. You just smoke it. 
the risk is incredible because you don't know what the hell you're smoking because there, there is no consistency to what is in the various synth uh, synthetic drugs that are being created by these Chinese formulas. And so it's a, a being purposely marketed to a population that is very susceptible to its attractiveness because of its uh, inexpensiveness. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I didn't catch the last part. To what degree what? I mean, obviously, you need to be a conspiracy. And the, the, charge, the, the, the count that's charged here is a conspiracy count. You have to knowingly participate and agree to participate um, in a narcotics conspiracy. And so I, I think the indictment is fairly bare bones on the particular conduct, so you can consult it. And I think more will come out in other court papers. Um, but anybody who knowingly agrees to engage in a narcotics conspiracy is chargeable. And I've said before that even though we only charge this number of folks in that that one person described as a retailer, uh, we hope and expect to charge a lot more people, which is why I issued the warning uh, that I did to other people who own bodegas, because they're the ones who are actually creating the forum in which this poison can be peddled. So uh, it's, it's a little bit harder sometimes to make a case against people who are not involved uh, directly in the manufacture, uh, but we're gonna do the best we can, yeah. I'm not going to. I'm not going to comment generally. I think um, I'll just leave it at what I said, which is, uh, if they didn't know before, they know now. And part of the reason for us to have not only this action but this announcement and the detail with which we're making this announcement, and the reason why the sheriff's office is going uh, door to door to bodega after bodega, numbering into the 90s, is so that everybody understands that and gets that message. And it is a less reasonable defense going forward. Yeah. I think I think there are some. I think they I think they're mostly of Yemeni background. Um, obviously, they're alleged to have been involved in a conspiracy, so they know each other for that purpose. And I think there are uh, two or three people, at least, who are related to each other. Right. Um, Last question. Are they uh, citizens or lawful permanent residents or illegal aliens? Yeah, I think they're mostly citizens. Am I right about that? I think they're mostly U.S. citizens. Yeah. That's a warning, yes. Yeah. I, I, if we have evidence that someone has knowingly conspired to engage in narcotics distribution, then we'll charge them. And what I'm saying is we're finding this substance and this poison in a certain kind of place. And that's a logical place to look for criminal culpability. And we will do that if we have the evidence to make the case. What I'm saying is that part of the purpose of this announcement, I'll repeat again, is to make sure that everybody knows and everyone is on notice that if you're knowingly selling this stuff, and you know what it is, you're in trouble. And, and it's worth repeating, so thanks for asking me the question again. Thanks.